Hi there, Jed McKenna again, coming to you with Knock Knock Contemplation number five from my favorite quiet spot in the corner of the Buddhist temple I go to and visit sometimes. And I'm going to talk about what we call the good book, which is the Bible, of course. Not many people really understand what it's about, in my opinion. The Bible is a compilation, a collection of laws, regulations, directives on how to run a city, a country, a family, perhaps you could say even our world. And with regard to those laws and directives, they are very good. They will result in a reasonably stable society. Uh, the concepts presented in the Bible, if followed, will result in a good family, a peaceful existence, a reasonably secure life. And from that perspective, I think that's wonderful. I think the Bible has nothing to do with truth, nothing to do with enlightenment, nothing to do with realizing the true nature of who you are and what you are. I did a little research and the word law comes up in the Bible somewhere between 500 and 600 times and that depends on the translation. Judges and judgment comes up between 500 and 700 times. Compassion one to three times. Truth about 20 times. Thou shalt do this, thou shalt not do that. Seems to be the standard uh, format of things. I don't believe there's any part of the Bible that says, thou shalt discover the truth of who you are. Thou shalt discover your true nature and the like. But there is five very special words, in my opinion, that one should pay attention to. And, and indeed, uh, Nisargadatta Maharaj and Ramana Raharshi both focused on these. They are, I am that I am. I am that I am. And you might note that there's, there's no punctuation in that. There's no commas in it. It's just I am that I am. Many years ago, I spent considerable time trying to figure out what that phrase meant. I sensed there was a gem within it. There was a, a truth within it that I wanted to know. But I just could not get my head around what I am that I am meant. And on and off for, for two or three years, I battered it around and finally I realized that uh, it is very clear what it means. If you reflect back on the previous meditation, previous contemplation, and note this discovering of uh, your awareness being this giant capacity for everything that happens. This your pointing, your final pointing was at this in immense, limitless capacity forever, whatever occurs in front of you. Sort of a giant welcoming. If we take the two words I am to be that capacity for all that is then we have essentially I am capacity and that over there is capacity. I don't know whether you've got this or not, but stick with me because there's a way of exercising this and, and getting it. When you point at your face, you're pointing at nothing other than the capacity that's there. There is a capacity for everything. 
Uh, if you turn your finger around, this may be a little challenging to do out in public, so we'll just do a, a thought experiment. Imagine pointing at one of your friends, pointing in their eyes and going, that's just capacity too. I am the same capacity for everything that is that person over there I am pointing to. Capacity is what I truly am. And what I'm pointing at, if I'm pointing to what this other person truly is, I'm simply pointing at the very same capacity. That's the thread. That capacity could be seen as the thread that connects all human beings. And I, indeed, I believe all living creatures is they have this capacity to varying degrees. It's the non-duality. It's the abiding in non-dual awareness is abiding in the capacity that is you and everyone else. Now contemplate that for a moment. I am, and then point your finger at that person in your imagination perhaps, I am that I am. To another person, I am that I am. And to another person, I am that I am. A little challenging for me to explain this. I, I trust I'm getting through to you. But just contemplate this, that every other person that you see has the same I am as you do. And you might say, well, they're, they're different. They're, they're, the people look different. The people sound different. These people are probably perceiving different. These people are from different cultures. And that is all true, but those things are not that I am capacity that I'm referring to. Those things are mostly egoic in nature. They're the things that you have placed over, the things that people place over the giant capacity lens that is you, that takes in everything. And that's their personality, the persona, the mask they wear. You could never, you could never take a, a good picture or an accurate picture if you had a distorted lens or if you had filters across it or uh, imagine a, a camera where you try to take a picture and it's got some kind of saran wrap in front of the lens. These are all personality issues which distort the true I am. But that doesn't mean that it isn't there behind everything that's happening. That doesn't mean that that capacity <clears throat> is not there allowing what is happening to happen. So for your contemplation Try this thought experiment, which is just another way of saying imagine this. Imagine you're pointing to your face and you're pointing to nothingness, just the capacity that allows everything to be. And then imagine pointing to another person and thinking, well, that's the same capacity. I'm pointing at that same capacity. But superficially on the surface, I might be pointing to a person from another culture or a person with different beliefs, etc. But that's just the mask. That's just the mask of the Greek tragedy, the persona. That's not that deep truth of what you are. Every time you look into another person's eyes, you're looking into that empty void that is the capacity 
for everything that is happening. And if you were to ask, are we reborn? Is there reincarnation? As it relates to this, I would say not in the way that most people think. But everybody that is born is born with this truth of their beingness there. It comes into the world almost in, as in a space suit. It's like this body is a space suit for containment of that capacity, to bring it down, to limit it to some degree so we can just have this small human experience. If we realized how big our experience could be, for most people it would be very, very overwhelming. And that's one of the purposes of doing the NAV series and doing the various contemplations and reading what you're reading is to bring you along to this so your mind, the thinking mechanism in you, gets a handle on it and goes, okay, okay, I can, I can see how this could be. I can get this. Because the mind has to be dealt with. The mind has to be handled and put out of the way and just say, okay, here's the explanation, mind. Now just step aside, take a break, have a rest. Just, just go have a nap even. His mind just go have a nap. Because we're going to be working with something else. Every time you look into somebody's eyes, see or attempt to see the same capacity that exists when they look into your eyes. That is the truth of what you are. And that is the meaning of I am that I am. Take your finger and point to you. I am, point to your face, I am, and then point over there, that I am. Same, same. This is simple Advaita. This is the simplicity of non-duality. Your essence is their essence. And their essence is your essence. Their truth is your truth. And that is my truth. Have a good day. Love you. Jed.